Hi everybody, many thanks for attending today's session uh, and webinar training session on CabDirect platform. Uh, so today we're really going to focus on some of the updates, the recent updates which uh, we launched in July 2016 um, to the platform to, to give you an overview um, of those updates and where they fit in with the, the user workflow. Um, the session will take about approximately half an hour uh, and to begin with, uh, just a quick uh, explanation of the design process for these new features. Um, we've been working in collaboration with a number of development partners um, in organizations and institutions across academia, uh, governmental research departments and the corporate sector, um, working with scientists and students to um, understand workflows related to systematic reviews and literature reviews and build features around both of those uh, both of those workflows essentially uh, to improve um, uh, the ability to conduct those. So a number of new features have been added to the previous uh, CabDirect platform. Um, for those who are new to CabDirect, CabDirect is a platform to search across a number of uh, databases that Cabby hosts. Um, which relate to applied life sciences. Uh, primarily these databases uh, that the majority of our users would, will be searching are Cab Abstracts and Global Health, which are large bibliographic databases containing over 10 million records between them. So to begin with, uh, we'll give a quick uh, introduction to the homepage and then I'll, I'll run through a platform search uh, to try and uh, incorporate these features um, in, in the general search that uh, a lot of our students will be conducting uh, or a lot of our users will be conducting sorry so here we're uh, we're on the home page now um, the uh, to to get to the home page you would go to www.cab direct.org um, and this will direct you to this page here this can be linked obviously from your library um, home page or library uh, management system which your organization or institution would link through um, and that should automatically authenticate you depending on their access options to provide you access to the platform so once you receive uh, or you land on the home page, I'm just going to talk you through a couple of the features here. So in this section here, we have um, the ability to add an institutional logo so that your library can add a logo so that you, you realize that you're coming to the platform from um, your organization's, uh, to, to access your organization's subscription. Um, on the right hand side, you have a list of products for which you have access to through our CabDirect platform. Um, and if you want to independently search across those products, you can click on the links here and conduct a, an independent database search across that subset of contents. If we scroll a little bit further down, we then have uh, some links to training resources. Um, so we have a number of training videos, uh, a, a schedule of webinars, and um, some uh, quick trays, trainer or, or quick reference guides, um, which will be listed uh, through these links here. Um, there'll also be an online integrated help, which is one of the upgrades that's been added to the uh, the platform. So, online help is a integrated help box, uh, whereby there'll be question mark. Uh, buttons and help tools throughout the platform, which if you click, click on, will link to a particular section of the help guide, which is relevant to the section you're looking at. So um, so you can simply access, access that from the top bar menu uh, at the top of the page, and you click on that, and that will show you all of the sections. Uh, but if you see these, these little question mark icons, which is displayed here, throughout the platform, if you click on those, those will take you through to the relevant um, section of the help file. If you'd like to send any feedback, as I mentioned previously, we've been working with um, uh, end users and the workflows that they, they generally encounter through systematic reviews and literature reviews. And if you'd like to feedback anything you'd like to see developed to the platform, if you click on that link there, um, you can send uh, an email to our, uh, to our 
product development team um, with your feedback and recommendations and we um, will take that on board. So to begin with, I'll just uh, conduct uh, a database search. Um, what I'm going to do is just do an example search for Panama disease, which is a disease which affects the um, banana crop. Here in this simple search um, search box, you can use Boolean operators, you can use phrase search in another syntax as well. Um, if you do a search across uh, through this uh, general search box, uh, you will do a, a search across all of the products you're subscribed to. Um, if you want, to, as mentioned before, if you want to independently search the database you have access to, you can click on uh, the relevant links in this list here. So if you just, uh, to conduct the search, you just simply click the search button. And that will take you through to a results page uh, here. And we'll talk through the results section uh, in, in a second. Um, but what I'm going to do is just explain a couple of other search modes that are available in the Cab Direct platform. So the keyword search is the one we've just conducted there, which allows you to, to integrate um, searches, uh, search terms and keywords with uh, database syntax that you're probably familiar, familiar with. So those are the and, uh, or not Boolean operators and some of the um, the other symbols which you can use um, as well, which can all be found in the help guide. The advanced search allows you to independently search across, uh, search for keywords across um, fields of uh, the bibliographic record um, which is listed in the database. So, for example, if we were searching for Panama disease, and we wanted to just search across a particular field, so maybe we only wanted to, to return results for, for articles that mention um, Panama disease within the title. You could select article title, for example, from the drop-down list there um, after you've put your, your search term into this box here. Um, you can also combine these with other terms uh, that search across other fields as well. So um, you can enter a term here and select a field here, and you can combine this with the, the various Boolean operator listed on the, in the drop-down on the left-hand side. You also have some limiters here as well, so you can limit down to publication dates, so um, published literature between particular dates, um, any records which have been added to the database since a particular time. Um, you can also um, limit by document type as well, and this is a new feature we've added, um, multiple selection across these drop-down menus. So you can select multiple selections from a whole range of, of different content types. Similarly, you can, you can search across particular projects, uh, database, sorry, databases, um, and you can select multiple ones through the checkbox as shown. Um, and alternatively, you can um, search, limit your searches to full text um, or open access journals where you can link through to the full record or full paper through the DOI or the URL. Um, or alternatively, we also have um, an evidence-based research filter which filters down records to any which relate to systematic reviews or meta-analysis. So very much evidence-based uh, research when you're when you're looking for those uh, types of content so that shows you the advanced search page uh, quickly the browse search is some um, uh, the ability to browse across a number of indexes uh, listed in the database so the indexes we we have available at the moment are the the author index the serial index and the subject index and I'll talk through each of those quickly now so to search across the author index you simply type in um, an author's name click search and you'll see a list of authors for which if you click on um, any one of these, you'll be able to, to see the papers published by that particular author. The serial, similarly, you can search by alphabetical um, listed at the top, or you can simply type in a particular journal or the beginnings of the journal name. Um, and filter through the browser list listed here. We also, we obviously include the title and the ISSN uh, listed here as well. 
And then finally, the subject browse allows you to browse across our subject codes, which are uh, called cabbie codes. So every time we add a record to the database and index the record, we also tag um, or index um, a cabbie code, which is relates to a particular subject. So for example, it means that if you're looking for uh, records which are relevant to food science and food products, you can click on this cabbie code and um, from this browse menu and be returned results which relate to that particular subject area. You'll see a little cross sign here and that's because we um, have a hierarchical structure of the uh, cabbie code. So there may be niche terms within food science which you're particularly interested in. So maybe you're interested in eggs and eggs products. And if you click on that, uh, that link there, that will then conduct a database search for those across the site for any records which relate to egg and egg products. And then finally, we have a link out to the thesaurus where you can actually build your, um, build your search statements from uh, the controlled vocabulary and correct terms within the thesaurus itself. So you just click on that link and you'll be sent to the Arthosaurus, which you can, Arthosaurus Builder. So that shows you some of the options there for the search modes. If I go back to keyword, um, I'll talk you through the results list um, before we look at different aspects uh, of the results page. So in the results list, you can see 635 results are returned, which seems quite a small amount so I'm just going to reconduct the search um, and I'm not entirely sure why that's small so if I type uh, I'll just take out the quotation marks for the moment um, and you'll see that there's uh, this list 772 results in the database for that particular search. So uh, below this number, you can then see each uh, record in the in your results list. Uh, so from number one to number twenty-five on the page. So you can you can show up to a hundred records per page from your results list. Um, and by default, you see the first twenty-five records here. Um, you can also uh, sort by relevance, by date, or by A to Z based on the, the article title. Um, and for each article header here, you'll see the article title, the beginnings of the abstract, and some further key bibliographic information listed here. We'll click through to a record in a second, but I'll just explain some of the export options which are available. Um, and some of the tabs that are available at the top of the results page as well. So here you can see in the tab, you have a, a tab for your search results. You also have a tab for my records um, or for selected records essentially. So if, you're, um, if you find a record which you're particularly interested in, you can select using these check boxes here or by clicking the all uh, button, you'll select all of the records which are displayed on that page. So that's the first 25 records in this list. And then you'll be able to, um, if you click on the My Records page or the Selected Records page, you'll then see all of those records displayed here, which are temporarily stored um, until uh, you end your search session or you close your browser. So um, once you select records or from the, from the results page as well, you will have the ability to export these and extract these in, in various ways. So once you've selected the, uh, the records you want to extract by using the checkbox, you can either print records, you can email the records to yourself, you can download them into an RIS file or to use for reference manage management software such as EndNote and um, Mendeley uh, and you can download an RIS file or a various file options such as bibtex and CSV files um, and you can also save records to um, a personalized account which we'll talk about in a second as well. Um, so that's the my records tab. The next tab is the my searches and this allows you to see your search history during your search session. So here you can see um, your search history and this will allow you if you if you like to combine your um, 
your searches in a step-by-step -step fashion. You'll be able to um, select searches and combine them using the Boolean operators here, and then simply clicking on the combine button that will then conduct a database search. Once again, you can then search, uh, save searches to your personalized area as well. So your personalized area is something called My Cabbie, um, and that allows you to, uh, if we click on that, to have your own personalized accounts. If you don't have one, if you click on the My Cabby account, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to then create one using a, uh, your um, an email and a password, and it's free to all users um, f for for users in institutions that subscribe to our databases and use the CapDirect platform. And then finally, the My Projects page, which I'll talk about in a in a second. So what I'll do is I'm going to go back to the results page quickly. Um, we've talked through some of the some of the options here. Um, also on the right hand side of the page, a couple of new features we've added um, is we've adapted the refine lists a, a little bit here. So so here for our search, you can see um, a visualization of the um, publication frequency across years. Um, for your particular search term. So you can see the number of papers that are published on particular years, which you can see has been going up and down through the years for this particular um, subject area. As you can see, we have archive content that goes back to 1910 for these uh, for the, the database as well. So you'll see um, an ability to refine a date range using the slider or using the, um, the dialog boxes at the top. Um, and you can also download these images to uh, PNG files if you're looking to use it within your research or within your work, um, or to JPEG files and PDF files. So that shows you some of the new visualization tools there, which are quite uh, quite handy and quite um, beneficial to to assess and visualize your your results. You also have um, the ability to filter down to particular uh, keywords um, that have been indexed for the records within your result sets across a number of different fields which are listed here as well and we've added the ability to actually be able to select across multiple options here so for example we can select from organism descriptor you'll see um, the most common terms listed in this sort of tree diagram here but you can see a full list if you click on the the full list button this will allow you to then search across um, particular keywords if you're looking for a particular um, if you want to filter and narrow your results down further to specific terms and this uh, one of the new features is, is that we've had actually allowed you to to select multiple options here using the checkboxes and you can combine these using the various boolean operators here as well once you've made your selections you can click the refine results and that will refine your results down further. Um, and you can see that these have been applied to this uh, section here. So you can clear all of these refine filters, or you can uh, click individual ones to, to um, delete those from your refine options as well. Additionally, uh, the development team have added the ability to actually select um, across multiple fields as well. So once you, you can select multiple keywords within a particular field, but you can also build your searches up as well. So for example, if we were interested maybe in um, uh, records which relate from our result sets which relate to a particular region of the world, so this is our geographical location field, you'll see that I've selected uh, a number of options here which are added to, um, to my refine uh, list at the top. Um, and like before, you can either refine by this option here, or you can close the box and select another uh, section uh, here as well. And you'll see that this once this dialog box comes up, um, you'll see that um, it retains your previous selections, um, and it'll also allow you to then build upon those selections and select for keywords in this particular field. So we're looking at the document type field here, um, and this will allow you to select various document document types you can filter down to. So maybe we'll fil fil could just filter just down to journal articles, conference papers, and conference proceedings. So you'll see that every time you click on this, this will then add for that particular field your keywords. If you click the refine lists, 
or refine results button that will then filter your results down even further so you can see that this is a really good way to build up complex searches um, across the database and across the searches so that shows you a way you can use those refine options on the right hand side I'm just going to click on a particular record now you can see we go into this first record here um, this will take you to the article level page. So here you can see a full list of bibliographic information, including the title of a particular article, the further bibliographic information listed here, and the full abstract listed here as well. On the right hand side, one of the new, uh, the new features we've added is the ability to explore similar records. So if you're looking at a particular uh, paper, which is very key and very relevant for your particular topic and research area, you can simply, um, the database will recommend other papers which are uh, very similar to your the record you're looking at and the topic area you're looking at. So you'll see the first five listed here. You'll also be able to click on a button which says show all similar records. And if I click on that button here, in a new page, you'll see that it will show you um, a number of relevant records which are similar to, to the one that you're looking at currently. Also, you can actually uh, you can view the indexing terms that we add for this record by use it by viewing this uh, box on the right hand side. It shows you the indexing terms um, within the header, and this allows you to also, whilst you're viewing the um, the indexing terms, this allows you to select and build your searches up from the particular indexing keywords that we use for this record. So once again, if this is a particularly relevant piece of research for your topic area, um, you can build searches up from some of the keywords that they use. So this is a term that, that they, uh, a technique called snowballing that uh, people often use um, when they're trying to search a database. So for example, if you click on the organism descriptor, you can select some options here. If we close that box and we maybe we we're interested in bananas and we're also we're interested in plant pathogenic fungi and disease control as well. Um, you can actually build your search up here, click the search button, and that will then conduct a database search um, across the site um, using those keywords, um, which are, will be really specific to obviously the needs that you're you're looking for. We also have the ability to, um, one of the new features we've added is the ability to highlight and annotate. So if you click on the highlight button, you'll have to be logged into your personalized area called My Cabby, so a personalized account, um, which as, as explained before, you can do so through clicking on the My Cabby uh, link at the top there and creating your account. But the ability to highlight um, is listed here. So you can click on the highlight button, click on the particular color and then you can select certain text within the abstract or the records click save and you'll see that that will retain your um, your highlight highlighted section there you also have the ability to annotate as well so if we click on the annotate button we highlight a particular section Type in an, uh, an annotation um, title and some additional comments and click the save button and that will retain an annotation there as well. And these will stay there within the record until you actively delete them um, from, the, uh, from, from the record. Finally, what, I'm, uh, what I will cover is the My Projects area as well. So if you click on the My Projects, you can actually organize... Uh, you can actually, this is this is part of your personalized My Cabby area and allows you to organize records and save searches into particular projects here. So if you, for example, if we were particularly focusing on Panama disease, there's a project focusing on Panama disease within um, Central America. You can type in a project name here, you can type in a project description, and you can create in a project. 
And you'll see that this will then create a project folder for you here. What I'll do is I'll go back to our results page to show you how you can then add records and searches to those particular, to that particular project. So from your results page, maybe we want to select the first three records here. Um, you can click on the save icon and that will pop up a dialog box and you can either create a new project from here or you can select previous projects which we've created. And we just created the Panama disease within Central America project. We can click that link there and we can save those records down to that project folder. So you'll see once you've saved a record, these will then be available here. Uh, these will then be available here with the, uh, the icon listed here. Also, you can then uh, save searches as well. So if you see this save search icon, you can click save searches. You can click Panama disease within Central America and you can click, uh, you can obviously select the project you want, sorry, and click OK. And that will save a search down to that project area as well. Um, you can also save searches from your my my uh, your search history, which will be listed within the my searches area or tab at the top. Um, and you just simply click on um, particular search and click save the save button and then you can save to a particular project area. So when we go back to my projects, if we have a look in that folder, um, you'll see the title for that particular folder and, and project. You'll also then be able to see the full further information. So when it was created and when it was last updated and how many records are contained within there and how many searches are within there as well. And if you click on the project, you will then be able to go into the project folder. Uh, the first screen you, you will encounter is an activity log. So this will show you each activity that you conducted for this particular project. So for example, we had just added a record, uh, added a search here. Uh, it will show you the date that that has added, the search that was um, conducted here. You can see refine options that you've added as well. It'll show you a number of results and you can also add notes to this particular activity area. Uh, activity uh, as well. Also you can then see uh, there's a records tab so you can see any records that you've downloaded to your particular project area and you'll be able to export these once again if you select these and export them. And finally the searches um, save searches area so you'll be able to see save searches to this particular project and you can also then create uh, weekly email alerts for particular project uh, a particular search statement so this allows you to um, to be sent any records which we index to the database um, so any new records which are added to the database um, will then be emailed to you that relate to your particular search terms and search statements so it's a really good way to, to see the relevant content that has been added to the database quite recently. And then finally, within the projects area, we have the ability to export this activity log to CSV files as well. So it's a really useful tool if you're creating systematic reviews or you're trying to track systematic reviews or literature reviews and um, the process that you've gone through to, to create those um, those areas, uh, those those records and those searches. So if you click on the export activity button, you'll then be able to export these to a CSV file or an Excel file here. So I hope that's been a useful session, uh, training session for you and, and helped uncover some new features um, of the CabDirect platform and, and familiarize yourself with the 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 new aesthetics of the platform as well um, if you have any um, feedback please feel free to to email myself um, or our development team as mentioned from the home page from uh, this quick link on the right hand side listed here many thanks again for your time and uh, we'll end the session there thank you